Hey, we're winding down the, the Fail Fest 2014 here in Fishers, Indiana, and Marsha Barnes, CEO of Rhino Strategic Solutions. Correct. Uh, formerly Brickyard Marketing. That's right. Just got off stage talking about a number of different points about failure in business and, and learning from those particular lessons. So, uh, thanks for coming on. I certainly. appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Not a problem. Hey, um, we uh, we certainly uh, uh, want to hear a lot about your experience. Can you give me a, a, a key example of a, a failure that you came across in your organization and how you were able to turn uh, almost like a pivotal sure. decision point? Yeah. You know, in, early in my 20s, I had a couple of business failures. And after the second one, I actually had what I call one really bad day where I found out my business partner had a drug problem and he stole my car and stole all my money and shut the business down and and took off and right. then that same day I had a routine doctor's checkup for my 18 month year old son uh, I have two boys and found out that he had cerebral palsy oh boy and the doctor told me this is within a couple hour period he said the, he's never gonna walk he's gonna be in a wheelchair all of his life and fortunately that's not true you know and Oh, and so anyway, I, yeah, I got, I got home and, and uh, you know, I'm sitting on 20, 29, 30 years old, I'm sitting on the floor, bawling my eyes out, rocking my babies and trying to figure out, you just get overwhelmed with Absolutely. what to do. And I just asked God to show me what is it that causes me to keep failing and not live up to the way that he's created me, you know, with all this potential. And he showed me, and it wasn't very pretty, that I was bossy and arrogant and that I thought I always had the best idea and I was a big windbag and blowhard and only worried about myself and not anybody else. And I got up off, off, off that floor and I said, these kids need me to be able to be a good leader for them to succeed. They need me to be able to be intelligent and keep my head together. And I'm going to do that so I can serve my children. And I'm also going to do that to serve my team members and my community. Oh my God. And um, so the big thing that I learned that day was to work harder on myself than I did on my job. Good Jim Rohn teaching. I started working hard on learning, reading, talking to successful people, listening to tapes. And, you know, you don't, things don't change overnight, but over 20 years, you become a different person. So I found Absolutely. in my early business failures that they were character failures, not idea failures, not execution failures, not funding failures, not marketing failures. They were failures of really loving and serving other people correctly. Does well, that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. Now, you described to me a little bit off air of how you changed your dynamic of your organization as opposed, I mean, traditionally, I mean, you have owners and managers yeah. and everything kind of flows down into into everybody who's working and decisions right. are usually coming from the top. Now that's that's conventional. That's yeah. that's yeah. how businesses usually yeah. run. So you did something completely different. Yeah. So not only do decisions come from the top, but all the ideas come from the top and then right. all the rest of the people are just expected to react to those ideas. Right. And you know, a lot of research is showing us that the ideas are really not what's important, it's the execution. But if you just keep letting your front line feel like all these ideas and changes are falling on them and they have no input on them, right. you don't get their discretionary effort. You don't get a whole person and a whole job. And you're not going to view your team members, nor are they going to view themselves as knowledge workers. They're going to see themselves as punch in a clock on right. an employee. So I prefer to think of an organizational chart as flipped upside down where ideas are harvested from the frontline folks that are in the areas that are closest to the impact points of your business, serving customers, making sales, signing people up for additional services, you know, those types of impact points. Absolutely. And ask them. It's not a suggestion box. Don't drop a bunch of suggestion boxes around your business. Don't run your surveys, but talk to people. Really good ideas come out of the relationships that you create yeah. with the people who you're responsible for leading. And then the managers, um, their role is to communicate those ideas from the front line up through the ranks or down through the ranks in my mind. Sure. And then the executive team, the CEO and the, and the, and the C-suite leaders, they're now in charge of resourcing, supporting those ideas, and managing the priorities of the idea flow right. so that they match the corporate strategy. Oh, that's fantastic. So you've developed a process of harvesting these ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and this is something that's not respective of your industry. Oh, this no. is something that can be utilized. Yeah, you can use this everywhere. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's a lot of different methods you can do it. A very simple one is just walk around and talk to people. Um, you know, I used to, every Friday morning, walk all the, all the offices and um, 
uh, you know, because we were an open environment pretty much, and I'd go from desk to desk and I'd ask one question, what are you working on today that's exciting? And I'd carry a notepad with me and I'd write down what they said they were working huh. on. And so many times they would also say, and then I have this other idea, or they'd start to give me ideas and I could redirect and encourage them to talk to, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. But I could, <laughs> I could redirect them um, to the appropriate person to share that idea with, and we got a lot of great ideas that way. Um, another thing that we did is um, I'm a big fan of the round table, right? Blow that oblong boardroom table up, yeah, crank absolutely. that CEO's butt up out of that chair, and put a round table down and invite some of your frontline folks in to share their ideas. And I'll challenge you to do this. Invite somebody who doesn't particularly like you, because they will be more likely to tell you the truth. They'll give you some frank assessments, right, absolutely. Right. And then take those ideas they have and create execution teams that they're participating in, and they will move heaven and earth to move your business forward, accomplishing their goals, the team's goals, the business goals, and ultimately they'll accomplish the things that you're working there for, too. Wow. All right. Well, uh uh, final thought of guidance for an entrepreneur that's actually maybe struggling with some of these type of administrative sure. tasks. You know, it takes a lot of courage to, um, to lead. It takes a lot of courage to be vulnerable enough to say, I don't have all the right ideas right. and go ask people for help. And I think the big piece that I found was where I was sourcing my identity from determined how much courage I had. And um, the, really, the thing that works for, has worked for me is knowing that God created me with full potent, with all this potential and perfectly to serve others and to love Him. And when I saw myself the way that God saw me, my courage was boosted up and I was able to lead the way that He had created me to lead. So that's, that's, the, my that's the main source. It, it is. That's my desire for others is that they will learn to see themselves as God sees them. And I'm always willing to help people find that find that path if they need anything, That's need fantastic. any help with that. Yeah. You know. Well, thank you so much. It's Marcia. my pleasure. Thank you. I uh, appreciate it. And we'll be in touch. Uh, I know we're going to be following you and what Rhino's doing as well. All right. Great. All it's right. an exciting time. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you.